You're not supposed to be in there. Chief is a family-owned, Nebraska-based company comprised of seven diverse brands. Chief, trusted, tested, true. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, October 17th, and hopefully we can get a big day of harvest in today. Starting off the morning by putting some fuel in the fuel trailer so that I can take it out to the combine. We ended last night with two full trucks and a full grain cart, so I've already sent Grant and another truck driver, the chief, to dump their loads so that the combine can start rolling. If we have any extra people lying around, which isn't often during the harvest day, we will send them out in the 7810, our loader tractor that has this pivot track closer on the back of it because we ran our circles so many times. The pivots just went around and around and around and the tracks are so deep. That's how Grant smashed those snoots yesterday or I guess it was two days ago technically, but you know what I mean. And so we, we run this over every single pivot track we have to throw some dirt here and kind of pack it down. It really helps. It is such a beautiful morning. It's just me out here this morning and my father-in-law, Dan, was out here, but he's off on some other projects right now. I really like being the only one out in the field at least in the morning times. Now when it's full swing, I want a full crew here. But like when I'm just filling up the combine, it's kind of nice when it can be just me. It's relaxing. Let's get this thing full. Dan does not like to be on camera, which is totally fine. Not everybody wants their entire lives blasted in front of the internet. So I appreciate you guys respecting his privacy so much and understanding. I also get a lot of questions about what this blue handle is. So the green handle is diesel that we're putting in here. And then this blue handle is diesel exhaust fluid or add blue. It is required for all of our tractors and combines and equipment to run. And this keeps us emissions compliant. While these are filling, I can track the oil, hydraulic fluid level, and the air filter cleanliness. One hundred and seventy four gallons. This is what the inside of the grain hopper looks like. You can see right through to the steering wheel in the driver's seat. Lots of augers. This is where it comes through initially and then augers out that way. I have the combine started up and right now we are just oiling all of the chains. So things are running slowly. I'm just getting some oil on them. Combines have so many moving parts. 
First we start the internals of the combine, then we start the head, rev up the engine, get everything up to speed, then we can enter the field. It is a mess. This corn got so blown over. Makes for very slow going. That side of the field is really good. I don't know what happened over here. See, now this is the problem with blown over corn. It all gets bunched up so easily. I got out to undo that pile and I was expecting just like a bunch of corn stalks to be jammed in those gathering chains, but it wasn't even that. They were just laid on top and weren't getting fed in. That makes me really nervous. I hope that doesn't happen often because if it does, we have to put the reel on the corn head and that's a really big job. We had to use one a couple years ago, but you, essentially it's just this big bracket that mounts on and it is like the bean head reel on a corn head and it just kind of helps feed the, those, uh, those laid over stalks into the head better. Because they're meant to be, corn stalks are meant to be fed in straight up, not laying down like that. I passed over the combine reins to Brandon, the hired guy. And we are at the in-laws farmstead. So you see those are the bins that Dan owns. This is the new to us tractor this year. John Deere 8R 340. In lieu of keeping hours off of it, it has not been a grain cart tractor, but it has been hooked up to a disc all season. And you might be asking, Laura, it's harvest season. Why a disc? And that is because during harvest, fires are super common around here. It's really dry, really windy. There's a lot of equipment moving around over corn stalks. And so it's good practice. Most farmers around here do it to just keep a disc hooked up in case of an event of a field fire in one of your fields or in a neighbor's field, you can go and help. Also in our case, our end rows happened to be really ridged because we had so many weeds this year. And so we took a cultivator and went through and cultivated all the weeds out. And that makes really rough driving for trucks and trailers. And so we're gonna bring the disc out, just kind of smooth them out. First, we need to air up a few tires. Look at that nice. Give me that nice I do actually. Haha. <laughs> Thank you. Grant's knife has a screwdriver attachment. How cool is that? It barely fits in the building. The back gangs of the disc would not fit through the door. This thing is so shiny and clean. I feel bad being so dirty in here. Let's see if Laura can back this thing out without hitting the roof. Just barely clears. Ooh. Now that is a good looking tractor. see these ridges in the ground it may not look like much but man they're tough on a semi truck it's real rough when we come in the field so Laura's disking them up right by the driveways so we have a little smoother entry better watch out for a fuel trailer. And we will just leave this here for when we need it next. Little lunch date in the truck. What'd you have, Grant? These ruffles, 
cheddar and sour cream chips have been hitting the spot lately. Pretty good. What else do you have in here? Um, I had a pretty much all lettuce sandwich, which is really good. I've got some popcorn, some nuts. I've got lots of fruits and veggies. And then I have some chicken. That's pretty good. Pretty good vegetable spread. I hopped out of the tractor and I'm now waiting in the Freightliner, which I have come to kind of really like as a truck to be driving around. Hauling most of the day yesterday with it worked really well. Um, I brought, did a little something different today. I had a, not a lot, but I had a considerable amount of downtime yesterday just because the combine is going so slowly through the down corn. So I brought my journal, my notebook where I keep track of everything, and then also my Bible. I'm doing some reading, and honestly, it is so much more calming than being on Instagram or Facebook or something like that. And here comes Gage with a full grain cart to fill me up. I can take it to town. Better roll the window up. Yep. It is still crank on this side and start the truck. Gage drives off and I tarp the truck. Made it safely to the ethanol plant. Now time to weigh, dump, get my ticket, head back to the field. Since this is my first year hauling grain, a lot of these places it's my first time going to ever. And Grant has done a really good job of walking me through maps and routes and flows of traffic and the rules of these places. He just did a really good job making sure I was really well informed before showing up to these places. We are going to that big chief bin over there. And Grant and I are responsible for 35,000 of the bushels that are going to be stored there. Got my scale ticket. Look, there's me, moisture 16.1. Not bad. Getting this side of the field opened up. So far, it's been a pretty good day. It's two o'clock. Where we're hauling closes at four today, so we'll see if I can get another load in there. Otherwise, I'll have to go to a different co-op. It has been very, very slow going with all the down corn today. This is what Gage had to say about it. We're out here picking corn, and it's so blown over that the header keeps clogging. You can't really see it from this angle, but... It just keeps clogging up where the auger is, where it sucks it into the throat of the combine and goes through all the stuff inside. Well, he keeps reversing it, our combine driver, and it'll go out, and then it'll just go in and get clogged in. Let's see if it clogs up this time. But this this patch is really freaking bad. Like, there's nothing you can do about this. That's just straight wind damage. Let's see what's gonna happen. Oh, yeah, plugged again. So bad. But just gotta get to right there. Right, right there. Hey, it's so much better. See, it's just getting clogged right there. It's just on this side too, but this is, this is really bad stuff. I know this cat isn't Pepper. It's a different farm cat. Lita's name is Ted. And then this is Betty. I know. He's like a fox. Silly kitty. Thing looks like a bobcat. Like Holy a cow. Guy's massive. Big farm cat. And a very silly farm dog. Somebody has made themselves right at home not in the cab ever you know the rules we did not go to town we're gonna save that one for tomorrow morning oh all right uh have you filled kim yet yeah i just got done filling okay he's gonna go to town just next round fill my truck and i'll come take it in okay bye-bye and i might have to leave a little bit early but i'm not for sure right now 
going on a hot date? No, I think we're going to go look at a pickup. Oh, okay. Well, you should let us know how it goes. All uh, If you need to leave, just let us know. We'll figure it out. All righty. All right. All right, bye. If you didn't know, Gage has been on the look lookout for a pickup for a long time. You might have seen in the background his white Tahoe that has 300,000 miles on it. That's his parents' vehicle that he's been driving to high school. He really wants to buy the old Power Stroke here, but this truck's too good. I can't let it go. How many miles do you have on it now? Uh, this has got 275. It looks pretty cool from the outside, though. Get out of here, cat. She just wants to hang out. <laughs> I'm going to, like Grant said, fill the fuel trailer with death, and then we have a kitten situation that we need to figure out. Where'd you come from? Huh? You're not supposed to be in there. We've had to start doing very thorough checks over equipment before starting or moving anything because these little guys. The fourth one is over there tearing into a rabbit. Last night, a possum came to our back porch and there I filmed it and there's comments like, oh man, watch out, the kittens, you know, something might happen. Pepper is vicious. We adopted her because she was causing problems attacking dogs and she has caught pigeons, ground squirrels, rabbits. She can hold her own. It's pretty impressive. Little meat eaters over here. Since it's been getting so cold at night, I make sure that every night they are in the machine shed. They've got a little heated bed to sleep on, clean litter, food and water in here. It's the perfect spot for them. The wind has picked up severely outside. With the wind comes better harvesting conditions. The leaves are drier, the corn picks easier, but it also means that we could have more fields potentially blowing over, which is never a good sign. But just wanted to thank you guys for following along on the daily harvest videos. I've really been enjoying putting them out for you guys. And everyone seems to be enjoying them except one person who commented too many videos recently. But, you know, you're never going to please everybody on the internet. So uh, just know that I appreciate you guys. We are so close to 500,000 subscribers. I think we're going to get it by the end of harvest, which is Grant and I's goal. Thank you so much for watching and following along. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.